about a month or so ago, I did a video on Debian holding a vote on the inclusion of non-free firmware within their installer. The only reason this vote even came up is a lot of people require this non-free firmware to even have a functional installer in the first place. And after receiving a seven day discussion extension period, the voting is finally over. The votes are in and the people of Debian have spoken. And the result is none of the results that I actually expect it to be. But watch till the end to find out which choice won. So partially due to that discussion extension, three new options were added. Also, they added this nice little TLDR explaining what each of the options actually is. So the first option was only one installer, including non-free firmware. So doing away with the third party installer and bringing it all together. The second option is recommending the installer that contains the non-free firmware. Basically putting the non-free one at the front, and then if you only want the free firmware, you can still go and use that one. And then the third option is basically keep them both existing, but present them both in a fair way. Rather than what was being done before where the free version was right at the top of the page and very easy to see, and then the non-free version was either hidden somewhere inside of a giant paragraph on one page or on another page down the bottom of the page in this tiny text. As for all of the new choices, these relate to the Debian social contract. Basically, a foundational document for Debian that makes Debian Debian. It explains what the Debian maintainers will or won't do with Debian in this case. So the first of the new options, option four, the installer with non-free software is not part of Debian. We continue to stand by the spirit of the Debian social contract one, which says Debian will remain 100% free. We provide the guidelines to be used to determine if a work is free in the document entitled the Debian Free Software Guidelines. We promise that the Debian system and all its components will be free according to these guidelines. We will support people who create or use both free and non-free works on Debian. We will never make the system require the use of a non-free component. Therefore, we will not include any non-free software in Debian, nor in the main archive or installer slash live slash cloud or other official images, and will not enable anything from non-free or contrib by default. Choice four was inherently the dumbest option because prior to the vote, they already weren't doing this. The way they can say that the non-free image was not the official image is they say, this is not the official image but it's hosted on the Debian servers, and it's linked to by the official Debian website. It looks pretty official to me. You just say, oh, it's not official. Therefore, it's not official. But let's just pretend they were already standing by it. The other thing they'll continue to stand by is Debian Social Contract 5, which says, works that do not meet our free software standards. We acknowledge that some of our users require the use of works that do not conform to the Debian free software guidelines. We have created contrib and non-free areas in our archive for these works. The packages in these areas are not part of the Debian system, although they have been configured for use with Debian. We encourage CD manufacturers to read the licenses of the package in these areas and determine if they can distribute the packages on their CDs. Thus, although non-free works are not a part of Debian, we support their use and provide infrastructure for non-free packages, such as our bug tracking system and mailing list. I like this sort of separation of it's part of Debian, it's not part of Debian. They host the thing, but oh, it's not part of Debian because it, well, let's just pretend that doesn't exist. But continuing on, thereby reinforcing the interpretation that any installer or image with non-free software on it is not part of the Debian system, but that we support their use and welcome others to distribute such work. Now, Proposal E and Proposal F are about changing the social contract. And because they are changing the social contract, they require a three to one majority, which is a pretty big deal. And the final option, Proposal F, choice six. So when it comes to changing the social contract, everything here is going to be changing the exact same way and the exact same message is going to be posted by Debian. The only difference is the final point right here. We will publish these images as official Debian media 
alongside the current media sets that do not include the non-free firmware packages, as opposed to replacing the current media sets. Basically, as it says here, they will keep both the installers. So there'll be a free firmware only installer and then a non-free firmware installer that obviously still includes the free firmware, but also includes non-free firmware in places where, you know, it's actually needed. Now, in the pre-voting, when people were seconding the proposal they liked, there was a clear winner. And that clear winner was Proposal A. This had nearly double the seconds of any of the other options. So initially, I thought Proposal A was going to be the one that actually won. And I thought Proposal A was also a fairly good proposal. You have one installer, it includes the non free firmware, and then it's going to do the same thing as 5 and 6. If your system doesn't need the non free firmware, it's just not going to be enabled. But the social contract would remain completely unchanged. So what actually happened? Well, Debian makes everything public, so we can see the way the voting actually broke down. Now Debian does some fancy mathematics to work out if any of these options should be kicked out. Firstly, if any of the options don't meet the quorum. Basically, the minimum number of people interested in this topic to make it worth discussing. And everything here manages to meet the requirement of 47.2202287160911. I don't know why you need that many decimal places, but all of them managed to meet it. If you care about how they got to the number, here is the formula, and there's 991 current voting developers. Now, the next thing is to make sure that all of the options actually meet their majority. So the first four options require a one-to-one -one majority, basically not a majority. As for options five and six, they require a three-to-one supermajority. So the first three options all scored above one. Option four was such a bad option that it didn't even meet one. As for five and six, they both met their supermajority. Now there was a seventh option added in the voting. That option is literally do nothing. None of the above. So the way the Debian voting works is basically everything is pitted against each other and then they work out which result is left at the end. And it turns out that um, after all of this voting here, option five is the option that won. So not only having non-free firmware in the installer and having the free and non-free version just merged together, but also changing the social contract. This is the end of an era for Debian. No longer can you say that Debian is a 100% free system. Yeah, you can certainly turn Debian into a 100% free system, but that claim out of the box basically has to go away. The reason why the air quotes are there is because no distro, no matter how much they claim to be 100% free, whether it's Parabola, whether it's Debian, it's not 100% free because we have hardware. And this great graphic explains the problem with calling things a free system when they're really not. Because it's a free system if the firmware is embedded onto the hardware and the user is unable to change it, but if the firmware is loaded by the kernel, suddenly that's non-free. It's the same software, it's just loaded slightly differently. And no matter what you do, what software you run, if you're using an x86 CPU, you're always running proprietary code because of the CPU microcode. I think clearing out what you can is a great goal to strive for, but never forget, your system is never going to be 100% free. So what do you think of this change to Debian? Do you think it was better to keep things as it always was? Or do you think this change is basically what needed to happen because the users had to use non-free firmware version anyway? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm gonna go and like the video. If you really like the video and you wanna become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's gonna be it for me and I'm out.